Turn with us in your Bibles to Mark chapter 6. Mark chapter 6. Thank you to all the adults and senior adults for that choir special. Enjoyed that very much. This is the perfect message today. <laughs> Following a mission trip, getting ready for Thanksgiving, thinking about the role of the church and confronting poverty and justice. And I know the Lord's going to speak. If you're in Mark chapter 6, say word. word. I'll begin verse 30. The word of God said, the apostles returned to Jesus and told him all they had done and taught. And he said to them, Come away by yourselves to a desolate, desolate place and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a desolate place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them. And they ran there on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd. And Jesus had compassion on them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. And when it grew late, his disciples came to him and said, This is a desolate place, and the hour is now late. Send them away and so they can go into the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. But Jesus answered them, You give them something to eat. And they said, Shall we go and buy two hundred denarii worth of bread and give it to them to eat? And Jesus said, How many loaves do you have? Go and see. And when they had found out, they said, Five loaves and two fish. Then he commanded them all to sit down in groups on the green grass, so they sat down in groups by hundreds and by fifties. And taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven, set a blessing and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples to set before the people. And he divided the two fish among them all, and they all ate and were satisfied. And they took up twelve baskets full of broken pieces and of the fish. And those who ate the loaves were five thousand men. May God bless the reading of His Word. Here the disciples have returned from the missionary journey where Jesus sent them out two by two when He instructed them not to take any bag, not to take any bread, not to take any money in their pouches or their pockets. And after they come back from their arduous missionary journey, there were so many people flocking to the disciples and Jesus, that they didn't even have a chance to eat. Their heart and their body and their mind was in need of rest. And so Jesus, who is the good shepherd, and He cares for those that He leads, He recognizes that they are in need of rest. And so He says, let's, let's get in the boat and let's go find a solitary place so you can have quiet, so you can have rest. Let's go find a place where the people are not bombarding you. But after they got into the boat and to go to the other side of the lake to find a solitary place, some of the people saw them in the boat going to another place and ran on foot to meet them at their destination. Now normally taking a boat across the lake is a faster way. But these people were running in a hurry and got to their destination before the disciples did. That's a significant action. Maybe this was a place that the disciples frequented with Jesus. Maybe this was a place that Jesus knew about. That was a deserted place. A desolate place, as the text said. Because people from many towns were coming from uh, all the towns around the lake to meet them at this location. And we find out it's actually 5,000 men, not including women and children. When you include women and children, this crowd was easily 15, 20,000 people. And you can imagine the disciples who had spent several days, maybe even weeks, ministering to people day in, day out. And now they see a crowd of 20,000 people. The text does not say the disciples had compassion on the crowd. 
No, the text says that Jesus sees the people and Jesus has compassion. He sees people that have no leader. He sees people who are like sheep without a shepherd. And so Jesus' answer to this society of the people who need leadership is to begin teaching them. He didn't work miracles. He didn't manufacture some supernatural sign. He began to teach them. And the disciples who still have had no chance to eat and are even more worn out and exhausted, they approach Jesus evidently in the middle of His teaching as He was still going on and they say, Jesus, uh, we're in a solitary place. The crowd is, is going to be hungry and there's no food. It's getting late. Can you tell the people to go home now? Can you tell them to go to the nearby villages and get something to eat? I mean... This is probably the largest gathering in Jesus' public ministry. 15, 20,000 people. Men plus women plus children. And Jesus was in teaching mode. He was in preaching mode. And they interrupt Him. And the disciples want to conclude the session. But Jesus is aware that there's a, a greater need. And the need is that the disciples should learn a lesson. So... Jesus puts the challenge back in their court. I normally do this. Someone comes up and says, Preacher, the parking lot's dirty. I say, the broom's in the closet. Preacher, there's trash on the bathroom floor. Here's the mop. Here's the broom. Jesus turns it around and says, Why don't you give them something? And they said, That would take 200 denarii. Equivalent to half a day's, half a year's wages. Six months of income. Let's put it in our perspective. $25,000 to feed 15, 20,000 people. Jesus, do you expect us to go spend half of a year's income for this one opportunity right here? Jesus doesn't address that question. He says, how many loaves and bread do you have? Well, they, they went looking for it. They came back and they had five loaves and two fish. You see, this moment of opportunity isn't really about the crowd because the crowd is not necessarily aware of the origin of the bread and the fish. This is for the disciples. And Jesus took the loaves and fishes and He distributes them to the disciples and He makes them feed the crowd. You wanted to send these people away, I'm going to let you feed them. You wanted to conclude this teaching session, I want you to go to each one, and I want you to look them in the eyes of a human being that's hungry that I'm talking to right now, and maybe you'll have a change of heart once you see these people are, are having a supernatural experience. They're, they're hearing from the Messiah right now. And He makes them feed the people. The people were happy. The people were satisfied. This word satisfied means they were content. The crowd was full. The crowd was, was not wanting anything. The text says the crowd was satisfied, but we never see the reaction of the disciples. We have to fast forward to verse 52 for our message next week to find a little clue. Look at verse 52 in Mark chapter 6. After Jesus was walking on the water... In verse 51, it says, Jesus got into the boat with them and the wind ceased, and they were utterly astounded, for they did not understand about the loaves, but their hearts were hardened. See, this whole lesson of distributing the loaves and distributing the fish was to show them they didn't have to go spend half a year's wages. They didn't have to spend $25,000 to meet people's needs. They had a Messiah who could meet their needs right then. But they still didn't get the point. You know, that's great encouragement because I know I'm so stupid sometimes. I'm so dumb sometimes when God tries to teach me something and, and Jesus' own disciples didn't get the lesson. Jesus doesn't stop teaching. <laughs> if you don't 
get the lesson in the desert. You just may get it in the sea. That he is your answer. You see, the disciples wanted rest. They wanted quiet. They wanted food. And Jesus had given them all the food the people could eat. But they didn't find rest in Christ that day. And as we meditate on this text, we shall not make the same mistakes that they did. Our message title is Finding Rest in the Power of Christ. Being satisfied in the power of Christ. As we look at this text, I want us to see four ways that we rest in the power of who Jesus is. The first is we rest in Jesus by knowing that He is the Good Shepherd. It says in verse 34, when Jesus landed, He saw the large crowd. He had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So Jesus' answer to leading sheep is teaching them. How does Jesus lead us? He leads us through the knowledge of the kingdom of God. He leads us through the message of the gospel, the message of repentance, the message of transformation, the message of Christ's followership. Jesus shepherds us by showing us the gospel, by showing us who He is. You see, their primary need was not to give them something. Their primary need was to show them something, to teach them about who he was. See, the principal task of the shepherd is to bring sheep to food. And that's what Jesus immediately began doing. He began feeding them. He began feeding them through the power of his word. He began feeding them through the sweet honey of his voice. And as Jesus spoke to them, their soul was being fed the word of God. Friend, why are, we, why are we so in need of rest? Why are we discontent? Why are we unsatisfied? Because we feed on so many things that don't make us full. We feed on so many things that leave us more empty than before we began eating. We feed on the vanity of the world. We feed on the the pleasures of the flesh. Entertainment and comfort is not the thing that makes us full. What makes us full is Christ and the food that comes from Him. The deepest need of our heart it's not that we just take a day off of work. If Sunday was just about Physical rest, Jesus would say, stay home, sleep in. But you have a greater need. And that is that your heart hears the message of Christ. So that you will be filled this week. And that's why we gather in the Lord's house. I was so encouraged. <laughs> we were supposed to go to a, a conference in Moran. Oh, I'm sorry, in Canaan on Friday. Our church is in Moran, but there's a, another place who we're, we're friends with in Canaan. And we get there at, uh, at 9 o'clock in the morning. And they're, they're already having church service on Friday morning. And I said, what's going on? Is there a special guest conference today? Is this a special meeting for, for me and uh, Pastor Jesse Herring? And they said, no, this is Friday prayer. We have Friday prayer from 8, p, uh, 8 a.m. to 12. 8 to noon, we come and worship and have prayer. And we got there and they were in the middle of singing. They were in the middle of praying. And they were going on and on and on. And they came up. Enoch came up to me and he said, Pastor, uh, Pastor Amos requests that you or Pastor Herring preach today. Okay. So I looked at Pastor Herring and I said, You up? He said, nope. You up. <laughs> okay. I know how they roll in Haiti. And they don't expect you to give a devotional. They expect you to talk for about an hour. So that's why I always carry my notebook with messages in it. So I started flipping through. And I found one. I was like, yeah, this will preach right here. This is, this is amazing. I preached it in, in uh, Haiti probably four years ago. And I was ready and Jesse looked over at me and he said... 
I'll do it. Okay. Praise God. I went and sat down, let him preach. He got up there, brought a word, and uh, I loved it. But I was so encouraged by the fact that, man, it was a Friday morning, and they were just there, ready to preach, ready to pray, ready to worship, ready to read Scripture. And I told Jesse, I said, man, in Haiti, this is what they do. This is how they worship. And a lot of us, the preacher gets long-winded, and it's time to get to... K and W, people start looking at their watch. On, uh, on Thursday evening, it would get dark very quickly, and so we had to cut a lot of our conference short. And we had taught from about 1 o'clock to about 5.30. And uh, Pastor uh, uh, Pradyu at the church, our church, says... Uh, uh, we, need to, we need to conclude because the people need to go home. And, and so I asked Enoch, I said, ask the people if they, they want to stay. And they said, they had been there for four and a half hours. No AC, 95 degrees outside. All they had was beans and rice. I said, what do you want to do? They said, teach us more. So we stayed and we taught more. It's amazing, folks. And, and you know the thing is? Around here, there's so much stuff that we could feed ourselves with. There's so much stuff around here we could consume. And I'm not talking about physical food. But down there, they want the spiritual food. We rest by knowing that Jesus is the good shepherd who leads us to the good food. Secondly, we rest in Jesus by looking to Him for our provision. Instead of looking to the Messiah... Who commands demons. Who can speak to the storm and instantly calm the storm. Who can say to a little sick girl and the dead, rise up. Who can say to the paralyzed, stand up. Instead of looking to the Messiah, they said, Jesus, do you expect us to spend half a year's income on feeding these people? They weren't looking to Christ. They were looking to their, their own pockets. We can't possibly do this. That's not the point. The point is not what you can do. The point is what Christ can do. If you look to Him, you won't be worried about what you can do. Just a, for, just a few verses ago, Jesus sent them on a missionary journey. With a command that they take no bread, no money, no bag. Why did he do that? He wanted to teach them how to trust in God for their provision. And now they come back and, and God did great things. And now they have an opportunity to trust in God. And what do they do? They immediately revert back to trusting in their own ability. They didn't get it. They're just like you and me. You see, there's some liberal scholars who for years have tried to say that what Jesus did here was he taught the people how to share. And he put them in groups of 50s and he put them in groups of 100s because he wanted to, them to get in small groups where they could share with each other. As if Jesus was some sort of nice Mr. Rogers that taught people moral lessons. <laughs> okay, kids, I want you to share your bread with one another. Behold the power of God. But the very next passage shows us Jesus wasn't teaching them about sharing. He was teaching them about Christ and what Jesus can do when you trust Him. That's why He had to walk out on the water to show them He can do anything if you will look to Him. You see, Jesus is the supernatural Son of God. Who controls the wind, the waves, the demons, the atoms, the particles of the fish and bread. He can turn water into wine. He can make sight from the blind. And Mark is telling us over and over that this is the one and only Christ. You see, if you know what Jesus has, you know that his sheep will never lack. If you know that Jesus is always there with unending provision for his sheep, the sheep can rest even in weary times. Even when you're worn out, 
Even when you're struggling, even when you're depressed, you can still rest in the Savior because when you've run out of your resources, you've just come to the beginning of His. The sheep can rest when the battle is raging all around. Because the good shepherd will fight for the sheep. When everything is going wrong in life and you look at and you don't have the resources to meet the needs of everyone, the sheep can rest. Because there is a shepherd taking care of them in the midst of their trial. As we would ride around Haiti, I would roll my window down because the AC in Pastor Enoch's car needs to be fixed. And we would go through certain sections of Port-au-Prince and Pastor Enoch would say, Pastor, you need to roll up your window now. This is not a good section. Roll my window up and I'd sweat, sweat, sweat. Then we get on the road and then I roll back down. There's a place near Canaan called the Metter, the Metal Marker in uh, Quadabuque. And I said, Enoch, I want to I wanna go by the metal market after we leave Canaan. He says, no, we don't do that today. I was like, why not? I want to go to the metal market. He said, that's not a good section. People are protesting. We'd pull up to the gas station. I would say, Enoch, uh, let, let us take care of your gas today. He'd say, Pastor, this is my job to take care of you. See, the great thing was when you were riding with Enoch, you didn't have to worry about where you were, where you were going, what you needed. I could just sit in the car. I could go over my notes. It was more like this. <laughs> Not many paved roads in Haiti. You see, when you know there's a shepherd always looking out for you. Even when things around you are raging, the sheep can rest in peace. Number three, we rest in Jesus by feeding on the food that comes from him. Jesus gives the disciples food, not only for them to share, but for them to partake. And I don't mean to use the word share, I mean to distribute that, that he gave them the food for them to then give to the people. We have to see that the food can only come from Christ. It cannot come from our own resources. We have to see that it's Jesus who gives us what we need to distribute. It's not something that originates within us. Because we can look in our own hands and we can see there's not enough to give everyone. I don't have enough to serve everyone. I don't have enough to teach everyone. And that's true. You don't have enough. You don't have the resources to minister to all the people you need to minister to. You don't have the resources. You need to be the Christian dad that you should be. You don't have the resources to be the Christian mom that you should be. The food that can uh, be given to you and your family will only come from Christ. Whatever we give our children, it must come from the food of Christ. It cannot come from the food of the world. We cannot let the world feed our children. We must be the one receiving from Christ, giving to the next generation. This is why Pastor Enoch said, Pastor, please, please teach them not to preach their ideas, but to teach Scripture. My friend, if the growth of the church depended on my ability to be creative, what a hard burden it would be to try to manufacture something every Sunday to please people and entertain people. But I've understood that my resources are not able to touch the spiritual needs of hearts, but God has the spiritual food with which His sheep are fed. We look at these younger generations in our country wandering about like sheep without a shepherd. Who will feed them? Who will give them the food of Christ? Who will take that food from the master and distribute it to the hungry people who are sheep without a shepherd? Where are the preachers and the missionaries and the sent ones being taken and sent to give the bread of Jesus among the thousands and hundreds? 
Where are the leaders who will go to the highways and the hedges to the lost sheep of the house of Israel? See, God has people who are not of our fold. God has people who don't speak English. God has people who aren't American. And He has called us to take the food which comes from Him and to give it to people even when we don't want to. The shepherd cares for his sheep and he has sheep. And you will be a tired and weary vessel in the master's fold. But oh, the food of the master is a food that never perishes. The food of Christ is better from, than the manna that falls from the sky. It is a food that lasts. It is a food that satisfies. The bread of the master is a sweet morsel upon the soul of a tired servant. Friends, we must seek that food. We must cherish that food. We must share that food. And lastly, we rest in Jesus by receiving more than we need. The end of the story is they collected 12 baskets full of extra food. It's no coincidence that there's 12 baskets. That means each disciple had to carry a big basket of extra. They had to go around and pick up the leftovers. And they had to carry them back and set them in front of the people. <laughs> and I could see Jesus just watching them go around because they were worried that there was not enough. And then they have so much that they had to take up all the extra. And I can see Jesus just smiling. Not having to say anything. And imagine their faces. Jesus is always able to provide more than we need. On Wednesday, the first day we were driving to the school, Pastor Enoch said, Pastor, I want you to know that there are a lot more students coming to the school who come for the feeding program. He said, I know we have 80 sponsored students, but there's, there's more that come to get, to get food, and, and we let them come to school even though they don't have sponsors. I said, okay, that's good. I said, how, how many? He said, oh, 120. I said, 120? He said, Pastor, their parents come to the school because they don't have enough food, and, and at the school they get food, and Pastor Prodi, you cannot tell them no. He has a compassion on them, and so they just come and come. So on Wednesday, we started taking pictures of the students. We took 60 pictures on Wednesday. On Thursday, we took 40 pictures, then 50 pictures, then 60 pictures, and they kept coming. We finished with 131 pictures of students at the Friendship School for Boys and Girls. 131 students who are being fed not just physical food, but spiritual food. <laughs> Enoch told me, he said, Pastor, we have prayed for a school. And when you pray for rain, you better bring a big bucket. <laughs> As we were coming home from the airport yesterday, I was talking with the other pastor with me and I said, you know, there's such a need in Haiti. And he was saying, why doesn't the government in Haiti do something? And I said, how can you change a whole country? How can you change a whole city? I said, no one can do that. But we can help one church. We can help feed one child. We can help give one child spiritual food. And when we look at the vast array of needs, we know we don't have enough resources to meet all the needs in Haiti or in the world. But friend, Jesus does. And when we trust Jesus, who is the good shepherd, he will feed his sheep. He will call his sheep 
And God has blessed abundantly. One of the hardest things about coming back from Haiti is encountering the complacency of American culture. And in many times the complacency of the church. And my encouragement today, as we prepare our hearts for thanksgiving, is to reflect on a God who has given you more than you can ever need. And your basket is so full that we must share it with others. We must share it with others. Amen, church. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we give you praise for being the good shepherd. The good shepherd who provides for our needs. And God, the sheep don't always see what the shepherd is doing. Sometimes the sheep can't even see the lesson that is being taught.